Hey, I'm Mitchell and welcome to another video in the RSP educational series. A while ago, we introduced soft starters and their basic functions, how they gradually ramp up voltage and current to reduce mechanical and electrical stress on motors during startup. Today, we're going to discuss how a soft starter is a carefully engineered system that's packed with high tech components working behind the scenes. We're going to crack open the heart of a soft starter to reveal the key components that manage torque, current, heat, etc. From thyristors controlling power flow to heat sinks preventing meltdown, we're diving deeper into the technology that keeps your motors running efficiently. As always, if you like this content and want more educational videos, please like and subscribe. Also, this video is for educational purposes only. Always consult a professional for your application. RSP Supply is not liable for any misuse of this information. With that said, let's get right into it. So when talking power uh, involving soft starters and managing power flow, what's going to come up first in conversation is thyristors, or sometimes you'll hear them called SCRs. That stands for silicone controlled rectifiers. So thyristors or SCRs, they regulate voltage during startup by phase angle control, and this ensures a smooth ramp up. So the way it works is soft starters use two thyristors per phase in anti-parallel form to adjust power flow. There's also phase controlled firing. Initially, the thyristors are gonna partially conduct, supplying a reduced voltage. Then the conduction angle or the firing angle increases gradually, allowing more and more power to flow. Voltage ramp up. So as thyristors fire earlier and earlier in each successive AC cycle, voltage then increases smoothly until full voltage is supplied. This is gonna reduce inrush current and torque surges. Or in simpler terms, limited voltage is going to be applied, making the motor start slowly. Gradual increase, thyristors progressively allow more and more power, increasing motor speed smoothly. Diodes and soft starters serve multiple functions. Uh, surge protection is one of them. So they absorb voltage spikes to prevent damage to sensitive components like thyristors. We have bypass contactors as well. These improve efficiency and reduce heat. They engage after startup to bypass SCRs or silicone controlled rectifiers. This prevents continuous heat generation. It reduces also electrical losses and improves efficiency. Uh, now on the heat sink side of, of the soft starter, soft starters generate a lot of heat, especially within the thyristors and the IGBTs. Heat sinks are gonna dissipate this thermal energy to prevent failure and maintain efficiency. Some types of heat sinks you have a passive type of heat sink, and uh, this is natural convection. This is basically just a finned structure with fins uh, made out of aluminum or copper, and it dissipates heat using ambient airflow, whatever is already naturally flowing through the compartment. This is suitable for low and medium power soft starters. Um, then you also have a different system uh, called active or forced air cooling, and that's involving fans or blowers this increases cooling efficiency for higher power applications. Then you'll all the way get up to liquid cooled systems. Uh, heat is transferred to a coolant for industrial applications like mining, oil, and gas, and heavy manufacturing. Control circuitry is another part and section of soft starters. It's uh, where the brain of the soft starter resides. Soft starters are gonna rely on microcontrollers or MCUs or DSPs to manage motor startup and protection functions. MCUs execute startup algorithms, control thyristor firing, and monitor voltage, current, and temperature. That's why they call it the brain. DSPs go a little deeper. They provide more advanced real-time motor diagnostics, uh, power factor measurement, and adaptive control based on load conditions. Both of these handle overload protection, communication protocols like Modbus, Profibus, Ethernet IP, and user interface controls. Uh, then we have current and voltage sensors. Current sensors, they measure current from the motor or in the motor to prevent overheating and detect overload or locked rotor conditions. Voltage sensors are gonna monitor uh, supply voltage to detect under voltage, over voltage, and even phase imbalances. Then you have your PSU or your power supply unit. That's where the conversion is happening between high voltage AC, like 40 volt or 600 volt, into low voltage DC like 24 volt or 5 volt for control electronics. 
This powers microcontrollers, relays, user interfaces, and gate drive circuits that trigger the SCRs or the silicone controlled rectifiers. This makes sure that there's stable operation within the electrical system, preventing control circuit failures and voltage fluctuations. So we've just broken down some of the key components that make soft starters so effective from power flow management to advanced control circuitry, but we're just getting started still. In the next video, we'll dive deeper into the critical protection and monitoring features that keep motors safe from overloads, voltage fluctuations, and overheating. Plus, we'll also explore communication interfaces and advanced features that make soft starters a lot smarter than ever. If you want to master motor control and ensure your systems run very smoothly, you won't want to miss part three. For a full line of soft starters and hundreds of thousands of other industrial automation products, please go to our website. Also, for more information and other educational videos, also go to rspsupply.com, the internet's top source for industrial hardware.